What is up guys, we're looking at the best mid laners to carry with this patch. Honestly, there are loads of different good mid laners out there at the moment, but these are the ones I think are the best to climb and carry with, so that is what we're focusing on. As always, this is my opinion, but I've done way too much research for this video, so like this video if you did, dislike it if you didn't, comment with your favourite mid picks, but let's jump in at number 5. First up is going to be Velkoz. I know probably not who you're expecting, but honestly, he's extremely strong right now. The meta in general is not so mid lane focused anymore we're shifting more into tanks with damage top and jungle which means we're kind of just fitting around the others at the moment that doesn't mean we're not strong because we are but it means we have a bit more choice when it comes to what we pick Velkoz just has so much damage right now and it's very long range so we can dish it out while taking nothing in return you have this really good poke damage with your geometry that can even hit their back line if you aim it right but you also have a crap ton of burst damage when you want to flip that switch right now you're super safe because you have a lot of wave clear with your W, you have poke so you don't need to go near anyone and even your burst damage is long range as well. You won't see him a ton in your games, he's not as popular as other people because he isn't that easy to get to grips with at first but when you do see him you'll probably get blown up at least once out of nowhere. Basically he does a bit of everything and he does it well, he's good in lane, he's good at bursting someone if they're caught, good at doing AOE damage in team fights, and good late game. Welcome to another Lux that's just slightly, slightly less attractive. And number four, we're going to have Corky. And I don't think he's really overpowered or anything like that. He's just got a perfect kit for solo queue. His poke damage is one thing. You'll probably top the damage charts every single game, even if you end up losing, which is kind of pretty dumb. The rocket spam hurts so much. Maybe not on tanks, I guess, but they're long enough range to hit the lower health targets at the back if you aim them properly. A lot like my package, Corky's package is the other huge thing. I play a lot of Corky, and I'd say at least half of my games are purely won by package roams. You just pick it up, you get an angle on a lane behind the laners and you use it. Normally I personally go bot lane, I cut the lane off behind them with my trail and we get a few flashes or kills which can turn into towers or dragons. You can have a good lane phase anyway, you have a great team fight as an AD carry, your mixed damage crits are amazing and you will have a huge impact in the game. Taking a bronze medal is going to be a Nivea again. I talk a lot about her. She's kind of this staple that doesn't really get changed herself. She just becomes better or worse depending on the meta. And right now, her win rate is ridiculous at every elo. Against Assassin, she is not the best, to be honest. But in a more passive lane where she can stack her tier and Rod of Ages up, she is amazing. And that is more what we've moved to now. It's so hard to fight against a Nivea, really. If you think about it, you walk close to her, right? You'll get a face full of damage and you kind of have to just commit and bum rush her, abuse her cooldowns and that's so hard to coordinate in solo queue. The thing I love is whether your team is ahead or behind, you're always going to be able to stand a chance of winning the game. Okay, so you can't really do that by roaming, I guess. Your roaming isn't as easy as others and you can't affect other lanes that way. But you do have a load of wave clear to stop them taking towers. You can zone or catch people with your wall. You can stun, you can slow, you can burst. So in my opinion, the trade-off is worth it. So our second spot is going to be Zed, and if you watch my best champions in general video a few days ago, you'll know that I actually put him first in that video, so I'm going to talk about why I moved him down one a bit later. Zed is banned a ton right now, and for good reason, he is one of the best champions at winning his lane and then winning the entire game from that lead. After looking into it more, a lot of the time Zed will lose are because he gets camped really hard in lane and put too far behind, or the game goes really, really late game. Most of the time when you win your lane on Zed, you're able to do a lot of work. You can kill your opponent over and over, you can roam to other lanes and kill people, you can even 1v2 or split push. There are just so many different ways to carry a game. He is getting a nerf on the PBE, they're targeting his shadow cooldown and the bonus AD gained, but honestly a good Zed will still be able to play around them. The changes are mainly to make it easier to punish him in lane if he uses his W to poke. I think really the big thing here is how much he can do with only one item or components of items. He needs like a Dirk to kill you in lane, that's like what, 1100 gold? maybe a ghost spade to team fight and kill everyone and will spike a lot earlier while everyone else is still buying their items they need to deal with him. So number one time is going to be Malzahar. I put him second before, mainly because while he was shooting up, he wasn't being played a ton. So it's hard to say if he really is that strong straight away. Well, I've played him a bunch recently and everyone else has started to more. And let me just say this guy is insane. He's relatively easy to play. Like you space aids a minion, you auto it to kill it. It spreads to another and you just auto push the lane like that. Not only do you have loads of pressure there, but you can poke easily. The opponent will miss CS under tower and there is very little 
little they can do to stop you. So basically, you get a free farm lane while they fall behind. Next up, in agile fights. Well, can actually for ganks, you just press R, honestly, and it's normally enough to net a kill, which is so easy to do. In actual team fights, the only thing you need to focus on is hitting your Q, that silence. And to be honest, it's not even that hard because it's so big. I guess, honestly, there are three things you need to kind of focus on to get full power or full potential out of this guy. You need to not die to start with because you have no mobility, but you're tanky enough, so even if you do get caught, it's not a huge deal. You need to hit that Q, which we said isn't too hard, and you need to ult the correct person and not just like a support. That's all relatively easy to do, and for how much reward you get out of it, so like how much damage you do for getting that right, it's just too good. So as with my AD carry video, I spent a little less time on those to go over a few others who are also really strong. Ari is really good again now. We've talked about her so much that I didn't really want to squeeze her onto the top five. She's not as strong in lane as she was before. A little easier to beat up on, I guess. But her team fight, her roaming, and her mobility are all so good that she's still top tier. Twisted Fate is one that if this was a diamond top five, he would be like number three or four. Basically, the higher you get on the ladder, the better this guy becomes because it's less about mechanics and more about decision making. This is how roaming champs are in general, like the risk reward balance of leaving your lane and moving to another, choosing the right time, the right place to roam that will maximize your gain while losing as little farm or whatever as possible. Finally, Kale is still just as busted as last patch, but thankfully not many people are playing her. Being 100% honest, I think she's too strong right now and overpowered, and if everyone starts to play her, then you'll see her permaband. She does so much damage, she can carry almost one v5 and there's very little you can do to stop her. If you can play Kale then you should really play her and abuse her but she's more difficult to have that full impact on which is why she's not on the top 5. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Do you agree with me or who else would you have put here instead? Remember to like, subscribe, comment, share but for now let's go to the robots.